Well, hello there, everybody. Um, thank you again for joining us on, you know, our lovely Tuesday, I guess, afternoon slot here at uh, Triple Whale. Um, today, joining me is Alejandro for our wonderful Ocean Hours. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, I'd love for you to give a brief intro to yourself, Alejandro. Hi, my name is Alejandro, and I am an e-commerce strategist here at Triple Whale, and I essentially meet with brands every day and go over their data to help them grow. Yep. Great. Awesome. So hi, everyone. I'm Raquel. Um, I'm a customer success manager here at Triple Whale, and very similar to Alejandro, um, I speak to our customers on a basically hourly basis, um, discussing you know, how do they get the value out of Triple Whale. So that is what we're here to discuss today. How do you guys get value out of Triple Whale? Um, so I would love if everyone in the chat can just give us a brief introduction. Where are they from? Where are they joining us from? Um, and you know, what is your your store? So Alejandro, where are you joining us from today? I'm in the Dominican Republic right now. Oh, the weather must be fabulous there right now. It is. It's like a desert. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. I'm joining from sunny, but a little bit chillier than uh, the DR Chicago. Um, you know, ready, ready and manifesting for some better weather. So very exciting. Um, thank you, Kenny, for joining us, Riot Society. Kenny, where do you actually sit? I'm not sure I actually know the answer to that. I know you do very often, um, but I actually don't know where you are. LA. Okay. It's also probably sunny and beautiful there as well, if I had to guess. Charles, also from Riot Society. Thank you for joining us today. Um, also in LA, <laughs> sometimes. Very nice. All right. So for those of you who haven't joined us today, so hi, Veronica. Thank you for joining us. Um, for those of you who haven't joined us before, um, the way that we kind of set up, you know, this whole um, structure is, you know, we're here to help you, so we would love to hear your questions. Um, feel free to pop them in the question box, and Alejandro and I can dive into them. Alejandro, any good questions you've heard recently? Ooh, let me think. Nothing, nothing, nothing too different from the usual, I'd say. I haven't, I haven't had too many questions about total impact, to be honest. Oh, really? Okay. I Very haven't. interesting. I also haven't gotten many questions about total impact, actually. Um, the biggest question that I have been getting regarding kind of like around the topic of total impact is, you know, what are the different post-purchase surveys that can be utilized? Um, and for everyone who is joining us today, that answer is, you can utilize our post-purchase survey, which you could find in the insight section of your dashboard. Um, you could utilize two of our partners, No or Faring. And if anyone would like an introduction, feel absolutely free to shoot me an email, um, you know, after this call. And, you know, I'm happy to set up an introduction and help you learn more about our partners. If, you know, our platform, um, you know, post-purchase survey is not the right fit for you, of course. Awesome. Looks like we've got questions. questions. All right. So Veronica, um, does Triple Whale have the capability to work with financial institutions? Um, great question, Veronica. So we have capability to have an integration with, and I'm totally blanking on what it is called. Um, QuickBooks. There we go. We do have capability to integrate with QuickBooks. Um, given that we used to have some sort of a financial hub and now we do not, um, I don't know the exact capabilities of integrating with QuickBooks is anymore, um, but we do have that capability. I'm happy to dive a little bit deeper into that, Veronica, and find out a little bit more. Let me make note of that. And then Veronica's second question, our landing page views are down on Triple Whale, but two to 4K higher on Google Analytics and Meta. Thoughts on that? Down on Triple Whale. That is pretty interesting. Um, Veronica, would you be okay with us sharing um, your dashboard and maybe we can dive a little bit deeper into it?
Monica says definitely yes. Okay. Cool. So let me, let's pull that up. Veronica. Do you want me to pull it up, Alejandro? Sure. What's if you to want to take over, or I can do it, no problem. Sure. Uh, totally up to you. I'm happy to do it. I guess whoever gets okay. there first. All right, let's see. Oh, I didn't find Veronica's account. There, there we go. I've got it. Darn it. All right. Let me share my screen. <coughs> you can see the screen this time, right, Alejandro? I, yes, but right now I only see okay. your face. Good. <sighs> Oh, uh, let's see. Can you see? Yes. There okay. We go. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. So let's actually dive into the pixel pages. Let me actually move this guy. So I want to check some things on the admin side in the back end. Um, first, Veronica, what I'm doing is I'm checking the back end to see are all of the Facebook and Google um, channels, are they connected properly? And from what I am seeing, they are. So my first thing I've come to believe is that this is not a connection issue. The second thing I'm looking at is UTMs. And from the back end, it looks like all of your UTMs are set up properly. So those are my first things that I'm going to check out to see what's going on. Um, Veronica, are you seeing at least the numbers that we're pulling in from platform um, are matching, um, you know, on the summary pages? Let's see what she says. Most of the time, yes, yeah, some little changes, but overall pretty close. Okay. Okay. I'm okay with that. Um, let's dive into pixel and let's go pixel all. And let's see, okay, specifically, I'm looking at last click. Um, Alejandro, what do you think would be the best attribution model to, to look at from this specific question? To, to answer this question, I'm looking at it right now on my screen, I'd say a linear sure. model would be the best one. Linear, okay. Yeah, so. Let's take a look. So taking a look at or seeing Google, right? Um, I'm actually seeing, from a ROAS perspective, and I know that was not the question. The question is um, landing page views, right? Um, landing yep. page views, it looks like we're actually tracking, not learning page purchases, it looks like we're potentially tracking more. Um, and then on Facebook specifically, we're tracking quite a lot less. So let's, let's start at Google, just to double check a few things. Let's ask you, Veronica, is there, is there a specific campaign on Google or Facebook um, leading to a specific landing page or is this just like the homepage? Like, is there a campaign tied to this? Or is this just, just like general sessions? Mm -hmm. Let me see what she says. Most of the time, Veronica, yes, some little changes. I'm also seeing, um, it looks like there actually is an issue with tracking. Um, now, when it comes to the ad URL that you are putting in, um, we typically only need one question mark, right? But if we're looking at this guy, it looks like there are two question marks. Um, essentially, and again, I'm not a developer, I'm just a mere customer success manager, but from everything I know about um, the, I guess the internet and the way that computers work, which is not a whole lot, but um, one thing I do know is that if there is more than one question mark, in a URL with that UTM, um, computers don't know which question mark that they should be looking at. So that is one thing that I would highly recommend that you do get fixed ASAP. Um, and I'm seeing it across a few different, yeah, I'm seeing it across what looks like all of your Google campaigns. So that could be causing some sort of a discrepancy. 
um, just in terms of what you're seeing from platform versus, um, you know, other platforms. Oh no, is my computer doing that thing again where I'm going in and out? I'm just gonna show off my camera. There we go. So that's the first thing that I am seeing in terms of Google that looks a little funky. Um, and let's see what Veronica answered. I think it is Google, to be honest. Um, on Facebook would lead to multiple product specific or general depends on the ad. We personally don't work with GA. The overall ad URL has been changed multiple times. The question marks that are showing in TW are from an overview, but the ads URL are correct. We focus just on Facebook. Huh? So Veronica, we typically pull in whatever is set up on, on Google. Um, so this would just be one thing to double check. Okay, let's go to Facebook and see what's going on there. Yeah. All the team that managed you know, amazing. So let's let's first look at UTMs. Have you seen anything funky, Alejandro? No, the only main difference that I see is that, wait, for some reason the account changed. Okay, here we go. So I think there's like a three, there's like a 2.5K difference in sessions that must be coming from those UTMs. So it's not that big of a difference. It's, so it must be from those little UTMs that you mentioned earlier. Let's Are you see. talking about Google or Facebook? In general, like for the okay. whole, for the whole, for the whole store. Mm -hmm. So if you go to Facebook, let me see. Impressions. Uh, so we can't see the number of sessions from Facebook side. How many are you seeing mm -hmm. on Facebook in general, Veronica? So we're recording 6,000 and 6,610. How many are you seeing that Facebook is reporting? She types. Pulling, hold down. Okay. We will hold on indeed. Hmm. For the same date range, she has eleven thousand seven hundred and fifty four. And Facebook is all over the place because if we were to add that, mm -hmm. if, if the if the the sessions on Facebook were eleven thousand seven hundred fifty four, then it would be over your total website sessions. So Facebook is over ascribing mm -hmm. sessions, if that makes sense. Do we want to look at it from a triple attribution view to see if sessions changes? It will change. It's going to make. It's going to give more sessions. Yeah. The most the most accurate session volume the, the most one the one we would use to get the most accurate number of sessions is the linear because it doesn't over attribute into any single one. Gotcha. Um it you have twenty eight thousand seven hundred and forty four sessions and then thirty thousand on Shopify or on Google Analytics and Facebook, if you add eleven thousand, if you we're saying there's six thousand from Facebook and Facebook is saying there, there's eleven thousand. So if you do the math then uh it's gonna come up higher than what the than what um, it's actually there. Sections are also higher in G8 and triple. Yeah, we're, we are pulling data from G8. I'm just saying that if our sessions from, from where our sessions are more aligned to what G8 is saying than what Facebook is saying, because Facebook is over estimating how many sessions you have by around yeah 3,000. We're underestimating by around 1.5, which is probably because of the UTMs that Raquel mentioned. Yeah. So Veronica, what I would love to see is once those UTMs are um, adjusted specifically on Google, um, let's give it maybe about a week after those UTMs are set up and yeah. hopefully the um, sessions should align a little bit more. Um, if not, we can keep an eye on this and we can be in touch kind of offline um, or rather off of this platform to discuss that a little bit further, okay? Cool. Anything else you want to add, Alejandro? No, that's pretty much it. Okay. Thank you so much, Veronica, for allowing us to 
um, dive into your account. So let me. So the question that you just asked, Veronica, that follow-up question um, is, so we don't have control over UTMs on Google. So those UTMs on Google are affecting our performance on Facebook. Um, no, when it comes to the metrics we're seeing on Google, that is being impacted by those UTMs only on Google, um, not necessarily on Facebook. So they're two separate entities altogether. Okay. All right. Let's see Kenny's question. All right. Kenny's asking on the insights, product analytics, and ad spend. Um, specifically today, it has been disappearing from the dashboard. However, the ad spend is within the ads. Will the ad spend be coming back to the main dashboard? Um, Kenny, I wonder if one of our developers is actually playing with something. Um, let's, let's see. I'm going to yeah, open up. You don't see it either? Mm -mm. Let me open up Madison Braids and let's dive in. All right, let me share my screen. And guys, we would love to hear more questions, so uh, keep them coming. All right, so we want to be on the insights section, product analytics. And let's look, we're looking at the last seven days. Let's actually move this guy. Um, let's see. Ad spend. So it looks like it is set up here. Let's just move it to the top. Here we go. Let's go. Hmm. You're right. Where to go? Oh, interesting. Now it has disappeared from my page. Okay, Kenny, I will have to tap into our dev team and see what's going on because this is either a bug or someone is playing around with something. Um, at this exact moment in time. Um, has this been happening like all day today or did you notice this recently? Just today. Uh, just today, okay. Would you say this is like within the past half hour or like the past couple of hours? Do you have a, a more specific timeline? Two hours. Okay, cool. I will make note of that. All right. Thank you, Kenny. Um, but you're saying that if we look in the ads, it's specifically still here. Total ad spend. Okay. I wonder if this is just our amazing dev team playing around with something. Probably. Something got moved around. No, thank you. Oh, shucks, Kenny. All right. All right. Any other question, guys? We are we are here to really help you guys out. Um, so would love to hear any questions that you guys might have. And for those newbies who have joined us today, um, you know, we would love to hear from you. You know, no question is a stupid question. That is my motto and my thought process. So would just love to hear them. All right. Let's see. I just got off a call with a customer. Hmm. I'm just looking at the questions that I got from them. They're very specific questions. I don't know if you would know the, the answers, Alejandro. Let's try. Let's see. Um, on the cohorts page, 
where is the new customer cost per acquisition calculated from? I know it's specifically coming from Shopify data, but mm -hmm. how is it actually being calculated? I think it's taking all the historical ad spend for mm -hmm. from Facebook and the platforms, like all the ad spend in general that we pull in from all your platforms, and it's taking mm -hmm. your new customer data from Shopify and it's doing the math combining those two data sources. Mm -hmm. So it's nothing to do with the pixel. It's just taking historical spend data. So it, it can just take the amount of um, the amount of customers that came in, let's say, a year ago. That's why the pixel is not important mm -hmm. because it could just take the ad spend that you spent, let's say, in December 2022, the number of new customers, and then come up with the calculation from there without needing any pixel data. There we go. There we go. So you didn't know the answer. I answered. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Kenny. How, nope, that's your, let's go back to this one. Okay, any word on Amazon cost of goods having the percentage feature like the Shopify cogs? Unfortunately, Kenny, I do not have an answer for you on that, um, but I'm happy to poke our team to see um, if I can get an answer. Let me just write that down. All right, cool. Um, and Kenny, you asked a second question. Um, how would you use the AOV mean median mode when looking at AOV? Oh, this is a great question, Kenny. All right, let me set my screen up again. Alejandro, you wanna take a whack at this one? Sure, it's a pretty okay, fast one. Screen. Do All it. right, let me share the screen. Well, maybe maybe talk slowly so that the, the share screen happens at the same time you're talking. All right. There we go. All right. So mean, median, and mode are three amigos of AOV, as Rava likes to call them. Um, if you haven't checked that video out, you definitely should. Um, so <laughs> part of the triple wheel onboarding. So basically, the theory behind the AOV section here is that there are three types of AOV. There's your average AOV, so average order value, your mean, which is made up, obviously, of your averages, so your, your your cheapest AOV or your lowest AOV and your highest, then we take an average of all the orders in between. There's a median AOV, so it's literally smack in the middle of the data set. So what is like in a range of values of AOV from your store, what would be the middle value? And then there's a mode AOV, which is the most useful one, which is your most common order. So mode, the mode of 40 means that most orders are occurring at 40, even though your AOV is 50. Now, why is this important? Because sometimes the AOV can skew more or less what your true AOV is. Because if you have a product that is worth 1000 and you have a couple of products that are worth, let's say, 100 those $1,000 orders will skew your average order value and make it seem higher than it is just because there were a few outlier orders. So using the mode AOV lets you more or less know where are a lot of people actually coming in. And that's how I would use it. I would use it by trying to make sure that the gap between mean AOV and mode AOV is not too big. Because if it's too big, then you're setting your AOV based off the wrong target. So if you have a mean AOV of like 150 and a mode of 50, then you have a problem because you, actually most of your orders are coming in at 50, but you're setting your targets as if they were 150. But with an AOV discrepancy like this one between 50 and 40, it shouldn't be too much of a big deal. I try to find a middle point between both of them. So I'd say 45 just to be right in the middle of that. I usually ignore the median. Then you can go to the bottom. If you scroll a bit more down, you can see through this AOV distribution where the most orders are coming in from. So you have your order value at the bottom and then you have your number of orders on the left. And you can see that a bulk of the orders for the store are actually coming in at 30 to 40. But you can also see to the far right that there's a small percentage of orders coming in at 129, which is why the AOV is 50. But the store owner, knowing that a lot of the orders are coming in at 40, then would set their CPA targets probably around that level instead of 50, because that's just more realistic of the volume that they're getting. Obviously, this changes if you have a bunch of products and you're trying to, you have a very complex SKU set, but it just lets you know where that true AOV lies. And just a question for you, Alejandro. You know, how can we utilize these SCDP segments um, to dive deeper into this data? Hmm. I think it wouldn't change too much. I guess I would just put the, let's say if you're selling product A versus product B, I would, mm -hmm. um, let's say you're selling leggings and shirts. And obviously if you're selling leggings and shirts, there's different shirts that have different price points within those shirts and there's different leggings that have different price points. I try to find out 
what is my mode AOV for each product category? So mm -hmm. what is my mode AOV for shirts? What is my mode AOV for leggings? So that again, I don't have that effect where maybe I think I can acquire a shirt customer for an AOV of 100, but actually they're like 70, but there's just, just a couple of expensive shirts in there. So I'd use it for that. Hmm. Very nice. Where is this page on the dashboard? Inside section. Ah, great question. You're running, gonna go right over here. Insights, right? And AOV. No problem, Veronica. All right. Kenny asked another great question. It's just, you know, coming in hot with those great questions today, Kenny. We always appreciate it. Um, how would you expand the questions on the post-purchase survey to be the most effective? For example, would you ask gender, age, etc.? Also, would the post-purchase additional questions overlap the zero-party data being shown in the pixel reporting? Great question. So let me address the second half of this question. Um, when it comes to post-purchase survey, um, the only piece of the survey that is attached to that zero party data is specifically this first question of which of the following led you to purchase today. Um, as you can see, when it comes to actually looking at the different options um, in terms of an answer that customers can choose, these are locked. Um, they are locked because of the fact that they are tried or tied back to that attribution um, when we go into the pixel pages. So this is the most rigid of all the questions. Um, but when it comes to you know secondary or um, third questions that you want to add ask someone, right? Um, this is a little bit more of a free form in terms of the um, you know question you want to ask. So not necessarily tied back to any of that zero party data at this moment in time. Um, the first half of your question, how would you expand the questions to be most effective? Um, any thoughts on that, Alejandro? Ooh, I mean, you definitely shouldn't overload customers because the more questions you have, the more, the more friction you're going to introduce. Um, hmm. it depends what you want to get out of it for the, for the sake of attribution, I'd say, keep it simple to what, where did you come from? But, um, yeah, maybe the who who are you buying for would also be a good one. If you want to if you want to decide, for example, or figure out if a lot of people are buying gifts or not. Um, but it's a very it's very independent. I wouldn't ask anything like gender or age, because you technically have that with Google Analytics, so you wouldn't really need that information. Um, but yeah, it, it's I, I keep it very 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 um, how do you say simple with where did you come from, and maybe who are you buying for because these affect more or less your decisions. So if you know a lot of people are buying gifts, then you'll probably make the messaging around that. But yeah, we'd have to ask Logan. We'll definitely get back to you on that. Logan's the PPS expert. Let me... What the little down. X symbols yeah. next to the I on the first question. Let's, what is the little... Uh... Are you talking about this guy? Let's see. Yes. Okay. Um, this has to do with some sort of a custom attribution. I'm honestly not so familiar with this, um, but it looks like we can do it for a few of the platforms, specifically email and text. Um, and I believe that just has to do with the fact that being that we're not like... <clears throat> Clavio is kind of a behind the scenes situation. So when somebody gets an email, um, they know that it's an email, but they don't necessarily know if you're utilizing Clavio or um, MailChimp, for example, right? Um, or, you know, any other of those vendors that kind of do very similar things, right? Um, so this just allows you to say, okay, if you're utilizing email, hopefully you're not utilizing more than one email platform, right? Like you want this attribution to actually go back to, um, uh, like anything on the Clavio page specifically. So if we go actually into Pixel, let's just see, right? And we go in here and we wait for it to load and we go into Clavio. I would assume that we're gonna see, and maybe we don't see it here. Maybe I'm wrong actually, it's very possible. I thought you would be able to see it as like a line item within Clavio, but maybe not. Do you know the answer to this one, Alejandro? Nope. Mm, 
Let's out of see. my area. Okay. You know what, Kenny? I am going to uh, get a little bit more info for you. Perfect. All right. Okay. Done. You're so welcome, Kenny. All right. Does anyone else have any other questions that, you know, are burning? They want their, their those answers. Anyone? Bueller? No? Say nope. Okay, we'll give it maybe 30 more seconds. If not, we are going to end today a little bit early. All right. Okay, so I think we're gonna end it here today. So thank you again, everyone for joining us. Thank you Alejandro, as always, for being an incredible co-pilot. Um, I appreciate your wisdom. I appreciate you showing up and bringing your A game. Um, and you. you know, thank you everyone who has joined us. Again, we do this every Tuesday, so feel free to come in with your questions. I know Kenny has been a, a frequent flyer here with uh, Ocean Hours, so you know I know Kenny can probably speak a little bit more to all the value that he's gotten, but he's gotten quite a lot of value. So I would encourage everyone to come, come often. Um, and, you know, come with questions because that's exactly what we're here to do, to answer them. So thank you, everyone who has joined us and uh, see you next week. Bye. Bye.